Well, I've travelled up to York today to meet Steve Starkey. Thanks very much, Steve, for agreeing to talk to My us. My pleasure. Um, Steve has got a very unusual uh, strategy for winning at betting. Steve, can you explain a bit about who you are, what you do, please? Yeah, um, Steve Starkey, I've been in the industry, or betting industry, since the age of 13 or 14. Uh, but at the age of 46, I suddenly left my employment. Uh, it was 2002, we took a hotel in Blackpool. But, as it turned out, we were very fortunate that, that when I left the industry, the industry changed very rapidly. We had the advent of Betfair, and we also, at that time, got an influx of reality TV betting programmes, which no one really understood. I quickly got the grasp of how to make, how to bet on these things, uh, and play a strategic long game. And I've bet on them now successfully for 16 years. Um, how successful? I've never had a losing quarter outside of July, August and September when there's nothing going on. So I tend not to build those three, but the other three quarters of the year, I've never won less than uh, £6,000 a quarter, £2,000 a month. So of these 16 years, my estimation is that I've made over £500,000. And that's the equivalent of getting a salary of £40,000 a year for basically sat on my backside. So you said that you, you were in your late 40s when you met, got the eureka moment, but I understand you were in the industry from a very early age. Yes, started at 13, live in York, started 13, 14, uh, job as a Tic Tac, race course clerk. Uh, as a group of 10, uh, my, one of my best friends is Brent Dolan, who was well known in the industry. Uh, so it was only a logical, uh, logical progress that a lot of this, my group of uh, school school of friends would become in the industry. I've got two friends who are race course bookmakers. Uh, I started work for Ladbrokes at 17, as I was too young to work at, in betting shops. And then I progressed to a private bookmaker, and then at 28 I started for Hills. And I had 16 great years there. But my expertise, although I was employed in the shops, my expertise and my knowledge was always better suited to uh, the products themselves. I used to run courses for gambling awareness, uh, bet profitability, uh, odds compiling, and teach people that. So. When I left the industry, I was straight away ready to take advantage of what I knew. So were you a winning punter on other um, media like horse racing, football, that sort of thing? Now or then? Then. When you, when you were in the industry, did you take advantage of your knowledge and uh, sort of poacher, a gamekeeper turned poacher? Yes, as, as when I worked, when I worked sort of in latter years and price-wise became very popular, of course. Uh, we always, I, if I was in the visiting a shop, I'd always take advantage of that. And I remember an instance when uh, one of the other firms they did a two for one offer on the forty nines bet, where it is if you had one, bet one, get one free. I did a quick calculation that if I took every number in trebles from one to forty nine, it would cost me uh, for a penny line, it would cost me sixty quid and my return would be 90 quid. With the one getting, sorry, with the one free, I'd be staking 60 and getting 90 for every time I did it. And I did that in about three shops, they weren't very happy about it. But anything like that, I've always been, yes, there's an opportunity, let's take it. So when, you, you mentioned that the um, betting exchanges and the reality TV sort of collided up and uh, came around at around the same time, what was your, early betting uh, history using those tools? We bought, we bought the hotel, it was 2000, May, June 2002. Uh, and I have a friend who, who, was, uh, who was in the industry and he came to me in October, he said, have you seen this Steve, Betfair? Uh, he said, right, he said, give me, un give me £100, pound, I'll open you an account, which we did. Uh, he said, you'll get the grasp of it. He says, be very careful though, Steve. He says, there's a lot of sharks. Uh, a lot of shrewd people on Betfair, and if you're not careful, it'll turn you over. Uh, my very first bet was uh, on Fame Academy, and was three singers, a young 
Devon girl, Sinead, 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 someone or other. She was a great singer, but she in the final with her was David Snedden. Now David Scott, Snedden was from Scotland, and of course, come the final vote, everyone in Scotland voted for David Snedden. I laid him ten pound at six to four, so a, a fifteen pound loss. And I went away, thought about it. I knew why I'd lost. I thought that won't happen again, and I think that's the art of it. So the fairly inauspicious start was actually the breakthrough? Yes, yes, because very, very soon you think, well, OK. Uh, I think Michelle McManus managed to win Pop Idol the following year. Uh, Michelle McManus was a Scottish girl, uh, relatively well built. Everybody felt sorry for her. She was a very good singer, but it was quite evident that the, with the level of Scottish support and the level of production support she received, in fact, at 20 to 1, she was a very, uh, a very likely winner, and of course she won. Uh, it won from my fifteen pound loss, probably on the very next event, turned into a four figure gain. So you do bet on a wide range of these type of events. Can you give us an idea of your yearly betting calendar and what programmes you have to endure to? Uh... <laughs> Endure, endure is probably is probably the right right word. Is I won't endure Love Island, by the way. It's well, it's one step too far. Well, I mean, yeah, the first first uh, event is the to get the uh, racing post January the second and look at the New Year specials, and there's usually or, or it, historically there's been some massive value about. Uh, one one special we used to come up every year was twenty to one. Osama bin Laden to be captured this year. Now, that was 20 to 1 in any one given year. So if you take that over a five year time span, you're virtually getting 4 to 1 the most wanted man in the world by America would be found in the next five years. And it was the wrong price. It didn't win for the three years that I did it, but the first years I didn't back it, it won. Uh, and an, another great special, which I just did miss out on. I think it was uh, 2006, 2007. I think the William Hill Hodge compiler had had too many sherries over the new year. Uh, and he put up uh, 66 to 1, the premiership to be decided on goal difference. Uh, <clears throat> now, a, cur a cursory glance through the record books tells you that generally there's less than seven points between the first and the second side. So the chances of there being no points differential isn't 66 to 1. I make it. I made it an eight to one shot. Uh, I avail myself of thirty pounds within online, thirty pound in shop, and on the very last game of the season, I was sweating, uh, and Manchester United won and won, went and won, and Chelsea could only draw, so my bet was lost. But the value, I, ha I did have the value, and in 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 any game or any particular aspect of gambling, if you get a value price, if your price is better than the expected outcome you will win over a long period. Talking of long periods, on the list you gave me, in the early January, you start watching Celebrity Big Brother. Now, you've got to sit and watch every episode of that to cop. I didn't... I, I wouldn't watch every, every episode. Simple reason that it, it, it... You would get too involved. It, in a lot of things like Big Brother, Celebrity Big Brother, the audience themselves will dip in and out of it. Uh, there are people who go on Digital Spy who follow it 24 hours a day, follow the programme religiously. As a punter, a gambler, making a book of it, you've got to adapt the view of what the casual is doing. The person who turns up, watches a couple of days a week, but comes the final will vote. So your opinion needs to marry in with theirs, so you need to be one of them. So I do watch, uh, and what, watch and try and see what the production intentions are, which is very important in Big Brother. The producers want an entertaining programme, so sometimes, uh, like Anne Widdicombe, we saw with Anne Widdicombe last year, they will do their best to keep a controversial character into the final. OK, so can you give me a list of, of, of the other things that you bet on, because they're quite varied. Yeah, I, I, I've omitted two flies up crawling up the wall, but uh, throughout the year, you know, we, I do Dancing on Ice, uh, which is a, a programme I quite like. Uh, the young lad won it this year. Uh, obviously, he was Jake Quickenden. He's a reality TV uh, veteran. 
fairly obvious at an early stage he was a decent skater. Likeable, northern, decent skater, going to take a lot of beating. Five to one was too big. Uh, and he'd never looked, apart from week one, where he was a bit weak, he never looked like getting beat. We then have the voice. Uh, much the same, really. Uh, I do the Golden Globes, which are... Uh, uh, we, Golden Globes, for those who don't know, are the uh, awards in America, which are a precursor to the Oscars. The Golden Globes are uh, decided by the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, of which there are 90 members. There are sort of 90 guys across the world, six from England, six from the UK, four from Germany, New Zealand, everywhere, and they're the foreign press. And they sit down and decide who they think should win the Golden Globe Awards. They try and second guess what will win the Oscars. But they don't always do it. They like the showy films. And I do remember Avatar were coming up. They, Cameron's, Cameron, somebody Cameron produced it. Massive budget film, big animal, graphics. Uh, it won their best picture. Immediately from being three to one to win the best picture at the Oscars, it went to four to six. It was a typical film which the press would like, but there was very little acting in it. So the actors guilds at the Oscars were never going to vote for Avatar. And The Hurt Locker, which was uh, a very low budget film, would appeal to the Oscar voters. And that went from two to one to six to one. And I remember the following morning being surprised they had that much effect on the market and, and piling into the Hurt Locker to win best film at the best picture at the Oscars at six to one. We, we also, it's, it's many, many, many different things that you, you can bet on. And I do the National Television Awards. Uh, again, it's virtually trying to think of it as a put we, we, for which a lot of uh, soap operas, things like that. But if you, if the person is a likable character in the soap opera, uh, they tend to vote for them. The Middle England mothers and the people will vote from Lucy Fallon, who plays Bethany in Coronation Street, being a great example. Uh, although I didn't back her. Uh, I fully realise now that why she won, because she's so likeable. We then have the SAG Awards, that which are the Screen Actors Guild Awards, and they're probably the best precursor for the Oscars. Uh, we have the Brit Awards. Um, all I can really say about the Brit Awards is that money talks. But and what one of the best aspects of reality gambling is, if I give you the analogy of Liverpool playing Arsenal, Everybody would have an opinion what price that is. If I were to ask you which act would be best male at the Brit Awards, there's probably only about a thousand people nationwide who would have a strong opinion and be able to make an informed opinion. If you consult with those people or can tap into their way of thinking, you will you will succeed. Dua Lipa was a it was a, the public vote this year for the best breakthrough act. Dua Lipa up against four other. Uh, for other acts and she was obviously far, far, far in front.